Hello and welcome to Pathfinder B-Sides. I am your host, Professor Phoenix, and today we will be talking about the Oozmorph archetype for the Shifter class. Not quite the steaming pile of garbage everyone makes it out to be. In case you don't know what a Shifter is, or worse, just listen to someone else tell you what it isn't, then I'm going to go over it very quickly. If there's a big enough response and someone wants the Shifter itself actually explained, let me know in the comments. So the Shifter is basically a spellless druid with full bab. In the lore, they are the protectors of druid circles, often their protectors are warriors. To use other context, you have the fighter and a barbarian, the wizard and the sorcerer, the ranger and hunter, and now you've got the druid and the Shifter. Where the druid could focus on a purely physical build, where you didn't cast spells, you would still only have 3 quarter bab and d8 hit die. The shifter is much better for this scenario, although you generally got fewer forms you can shift into. On the flip side, you have more ways to alter your init abilities, turning you into more of a lycanthrope than anything else. But to get to the point, we're going to be talking about the ooze morph archetype. So, first off, you are proficient with light armors and simple weapons. This will be important to remember here in a bit. This replaces your standard proficiencies. Next, you get the universal monster ability Compression. This lets you move through one quarter of your normal size without having to make an acrobatics check to squeeze through tight quarters. You can squeeze through the space one eighth your size with an Escape Artist DC of 30. Much better odds there. You can use this either as an ooze or as your normal form. Oh, and if you wanted to look like the human you wanted to be, that's good because that brings us to fluidic body. An Oozmorph's base form is not that of her race, but rather that of a protoplasmic blob that has the same volume and weight. An Oozmorph treats her creature type as both ooze and her base creature type from her race for the purpose of effects targeting creatures by type, such as like Bane weapons and a ranger's favorite enemy. In this form, an Oozmorph is immune to critical hits and precision damage and can't be flanked. However, she has no magic item slots and can't benefit from armor, cast spells, hold objects, speak, or use any magic item that requires activation is held or is worn on the body. An Oozmorph reverts to this formless state whenever she is unconscious or in an area of anti-magic. This is treated as a polymorph effect. A number of times per day equal to half her level, that's a minimum of one. An Oozmorph can assume a humanoid form as a move action. This transformation is identical to Alter Self, except the Oozmorph can maintain the form for a number of hours equal to her level. Each hour after this duration, the Oozmorph must succeed at a DC 15 fortitude save or revert back to her fluidic body until she rests for at least 8 hours. This save DC increases by 1 for each additional hour spent maintaining the form. At 8th level, the Oozmorph can treat this ability as B-Shape 1, and at 15th, she can treat this ability as B-Shape 2 or Giant Shape. Ending this transformation at any time reverts the Oozmorph back to her ooze form and renders her fatigued for a number of minutes equal to the number of hours she maintained the form. This replaces Chimeric Form, Greater Chimeric Form, Wild Shape, Shifter Aspect, and all improvements of Shifter Aspect. Okay, so there's a lot to digest here. First, your main shape is Blob Form. While looking like a blob, you can't be flanked or critted against. That's good! Because if your DM has crazy good rolls, there's not much you can do against you now. Starting at first level, you can look like whatever humanoid you want for an hour per level. You'll need to make a DC 15 fort save once an hour to retain this form, and that save goes up every consecutive hour you are in the form you're in. So at 8th level, you get the ability to turn into animals, so hey, there's your original save change you would have had as a shifter, except... Now you can change it to any non-magical animal per B-Shape 1, and you get the abilities listed under the spell. At 16th level, you get B-Shape 2 and Giant Shape 1, which is pretty baller. B-Shape 2 gets you better in-game forms, while B-Shape 1 will net you much better combat prowess. 
a, a further reach in fun toys like rock catching and rock throwing. Finally, when you're ready to end your time as a humanoid, animal, or giant, you'll need as many minutes as you had hours in the form to rest, since you'll be fatigued until you do. So keep that in mind. The good news is, even when you're in giant form, you would still be able to compress and walk down hallways until your height is needed again. Now, this ability is going to replace chimeric form, greater chimeric form, wild shape, and all of your animal aspects, which depending on how you look at it, you still get wild shape just at a later level. The chimeric aspects seem like a decent trait as well. It all depends on which flavor you're going for, in my opinion. Next on the list is Morphic Weaponry. An ooze morph can create a number of natural weapons to fight with from any portion of her body regardless of her current form. At first level, as a move action, an ooze morph can form two primary natural attacks that each deal 1d6 points of bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing damage, chosen by the ooze morph when she forms them. An ooze morph can change the damage type of any number of her natural weapons as a swift action. An ooze morph can gain one additional primary attack at 6th level and another at 15th level. The total number of natural attacks an ooze morph has at any time includes those gained via her current form. For example, an 8th level ooze morph who has taken the form of a wolf with beast shape 1 has a bite attack as part of that form. She can create only two additional natural attacks via morphic weaponry for a total of three attacks available to her at that level. If the ooze morph later reverts to a humanoid form with no natural weapons, she can instead create three morphic weapons. This replaces shifter claws. This one's pretty cool the longer you think about it. The wolf in this example normally has the one bite attack, but imagine two tendrils coming out of the sides of its neck and each one of those tendrils has its own bite that you can change to bludgeoning or piercing or slashing just whenever you wake them. And when you've got these extra bites, you've got extra trip attacks per round. Same for if you decided to go with an elf with a sword. You go in for the attack and at the same time two spears come out of nowhere and skewer your enemies like a stuck pig. It could be a lot of fun in my eyes. You do however lose your shifter claws which would have progressively gotten better over time. Again it seems to be whatever you think would be more fun to play. Next on the list is Ooze Empathy. An Ooze Morph gains the shifter's wild empathy class feature but can only use it to influence the attitudes of oozes with an intelligence score of 2 or lower. An ooze morph can use this ability on mindless oozes. When she does so, she imparts a modicum of intellect to the ooze to allow it to respond to her commands. This alters wild empathy. The ability explains itself pretty well, but I'll elaborate a little bit. Most oozes have a zero in intelligence, so you normally wouldn't be able to persuade the dungeon's gelatinous cube you wanted to be its friend, and then to persuade it to let you leave so you can find it some nice new food down the line in the dungeon. As an ooze morph, you can! To be fair, wild empathy wasn't getting used that often anyways. Next on this incredible ride, we've got damage reduction. At second level, an ooze morph gains DR4 slashing while unencumbered and either wearing no armor or wearing light non-metal armor. This damage reduction increases by 2 at 4th and every 4 levels after, so that's an additional plus 2 at 6th, 10th, 14th, and 16th and 20th level, up to a maximum of DR14 slashing at 20th level. This replaces defensive instinct. Ah, so here it is. Instead of wisdom going towards your AC, now you get a flat damage resistance that scales as you level. Since you won't be wearing armor as the three-headed lion anyways, not a big loss. Also, this makes you much less mad, you know, multiple attribute dependent, and lets you add in another bump to that constitution that you'll be needing to maintain your form anyways. Again, we netted ourselves another win. And finally, we've got Clinging Ooze. Nope, not the booger from your nose, but an ability. So, at fourth level, when you're in your natural ooze form, an ooze morph gains a climb speed of 10 feet. This replaces Woodland Stride. So tell me, how often were you planning on running through bushes? Especially when you couldn't just fly over them. 
That's what I thought. This will make you the party favorite, holding onto a rope and just climbing your way up that cliff like a boss. These are just my opinions. It makes the shifter seem like a much more fun class to play. I can't wait to give this archetype a try. Hopefully maybe in my next campaign I play in? Or definitely at least a one shot because it sounds like it would just be ridiculous and fun. In closing, I can't really think of any literary things to think of like examples of like blobs that become human and then do stuff and then comes back to being a blob and just whatever. But I can think of a few other aspects of this class that would be more badass. Um, first, you've got Lust from Full Metal Alchemist, right? Where she would just be walking and suddenly, like, uh, she'd see a bad guy and be like, poof, with, like, your finger and it goes across the room and gets its stab on. Also, I could just imagine flailing your arms out like Tentacle Boy and just, like, gra like whipping at people and tripping them and being awesome. Um... The whole climbing up the wall as an ooze, that seems like it would be fun and I would just be like, whenever I have to sleep, I would just climb up to the ceiling of the dungeon and just fall asleep up there instead of like on the ground. Like it, it would be good for role play, you know. Um, also with the whole compression thing, you could always actually just sit inside one of your teammates' backpacks and just like chill there, you know. In case you got to go into town and and don't really want to continuously do the uh, the whole fluidic body thing, and I mean, sure you're in town, but do you really want to be making a save or risk falling down into a puddle of of blob in the middle of a conversation with like the guard? Because that just seems like you'd get in trouble. But ultimately, I would have fun with this. There's, there's a lot of role playability here. There's a lot of flavor. And it kind of makes up for the weaker aspects of the shifter class. But, you know, that's just my 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 opinion. Um, what do you think? Like, hit me up in the comments. Let's argue and bicker about this. Thanks for sticking through the video. I don't have a catch line or catchphrase to play me out of the video. So I'm just going to sing and sing until you guys just click off. Don't forget the thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe, I'm just gonna thank you for watching the video.